cells are the fundamental building blocks of life. Whether bacteria, plants, animals, or humans, every known living organism consists of one or more of these tiny structures. Complex organisms like us are made up of a variety of different cell types. Depending on their functions, they differ in their morphology. For example, muscle fibers can be several centimeters long and have numerous cell nuclei. These features clearly distinguish them from other cell types such as sperm or blood cells. Although they differ, our cells basically have the following structure. They have a plasma membrane that separates the cell's interior from the surrounding environment, regulates the transport of substances into and out of the cell, and thus maintains a stable internal milieu. The membrane is primarily composed of phospholipid molecules, each consisting of a hydrophilic head and two hydrophobic tails. These molecules are arranged so that the hydrophilic heads face the aqueous internal or external environment. Proteins are embedded in and connected to the plasma membrane. Those that completely span the membrane are called transmembrane proteins. This group includes, for example, ion channels, which allow charged particles to pass through the membrane with ease. Sugar molecules protrude from the outside of the cell membrane into the extracellular space. Among other things, the sugar layer serves to form tissue. In this way, it helps similar cells to recognize each other and join together to form a compound. If we remove the cell membrane, we can clearly see the liquid component of the cytoplasm, the cytosol. This gel-like substance surrounds the cell organelles and consists mainly of water. Other components are proteins, lipids, and ions. With a few exceptions, all our cells have the largest and most conspicuous cell organelle, the nucleus. The nucleus is oval to round and has an inner and an outer membrane. The nuclear envelope is permeated with pores so that an exchange of substances can take place. Inside is the majority of our genetic information which is present in the form of several DNA strands and determines physical characteristics such as eye and hair color. The long strands of DNA are wrapped around histones so that they can fit into the cell nucleus. The entire thread-like complex of DNA, histones, and other nuclear proteins is called chromatin. In addition to the chromatin, there are one or more nuclear bodies in the cell nucleus. The nuclear lamina which provides stability, is located directly on the inside of the nuclear envelope. The outer membrane of the cell nucleus is covered with ribosomes and merges directly into the endoplasmic reticulum. This highly branched system has both a smooth and a rough area. The smooth endoplasmic reticulum has a tubular structure and is weakly developed in most cells. The rough endoplasmic reticulum is responsible for the production of proteins, among other things. Ribosomes are located near the outer surface of the rough endoplasmic reticulum, which synthesize proteins directly into the inner cavity. There they mature and are finally transported to their destination with the help of vesicles. Some of the proteins require modification and therefore migrate to another cell organelle. The incoming vesicles fuse with the membrane of the organelle and their contents enter its interior. Here the proteins undergo chemical modifications, such as the attachment of a sugar molecule. On the other side, the modified proteins are repackaged into vesicles and sent to their destination. The cytoskeleton is a complex and dynamic network consisting of microtubules, intermediate filaments, and actin filaments. It stabilizes the cell, enables movement, and fixes the cell organelles. In addition, the vesicles reach their destination with the help of the cytoskeleton. The actin filaments and microtubules in particular are subject to continuous assembly and disassembly processes. The transportation of vesicles, 
the production of biomolecules, and other cellular processes all require energy. A key role in energy production is played by mitochondria, cell organelles, with an outer membrane and a highly folded inner membrane. The mitochondria produce the majority of the energy carrier adenosine triphosphate. The lysosomes are responsible for the breakdown of exogenous and defective endogenous substances. These are special vesicles that contain digestive enzymes and represent the stomach of the cell. There are two centrosomes near the cell nucleus. Each centrosome consists of two cylindrical centrioles that are arranged at right angles to each other. The centrosomes play a decisive role in cell division in particular. If you want to learn more about cells, don't forget to subscribe. And if you found this video helpful, I'd really appreciate a like.